last week and sort of the vibe of that. How was it different or, or similar today um, whenever you guys all sat down and talked about the weekend? Well, I think, again, when, when you come across a game that was emotional, that was emotionally draining, your first you know, instinct may be to, okay, well, we didn't win the game and there's negative negativity involved and stuff like that. But we've done a pretty good job of kind of pushing past those initial normal emotions. We try and get rid of those all after the game when we talk a little bit and discuss what we were going to do today. And then this morning it was more about, okay, how are we going to prepare for two games in a week? And you see Preki out there now is just working with some of the young forwards to see because, you know, Jordan's at risk sometimes. You know, his last injury came on a Saturday, Wednesday. Uh, Raul, that was his first 90 minutes back, so maybe one of these young kids is going to play. Same with Kelvin. I just over there checked with Kelvin, Gustav. We need to make sure we get all of those little details so that we can prepare for the two games. It was a pretty light-hearted session, especially when the, when the starters were out here. Uh, we talked a lot about the tactical preparation, but how important is it to sort of gauge the room mentally as well to kind of mix in some of these lighter-hearted days as well? Look, the, the, the mentality of the group is strong, and they know when it's a work day, and they know when they can have some fun. This sport is about, you know, yeah, it's wins and losses, and it's, and it's a job, and there's money on the line and all of that, but... At some point, these guys are big kids. And on a day like today, where we weren't going to get much out of them, let's let them have some fun. Kicking the ball around, competing against each other, all that sort of stuff, you know, prepares us for a good week. And Damien had some strong words of encouragement for the group. How important is it to have them hear messages from sort of a range of voices? It's, it's critical. I didn't say a word the entire training. So Preki, Gonzo, Jimmy did all the soccer work. Damien did all the warm-up work. I'm happy to, you know, sit here and talk to you guys. Uh, what did you see looking back uh, on, the, on the game this weekend, uh, especially defensively, uh, a lot of uh, frustrations, obviously, with the goals that were conceded? Yeah. So if you start with the set-piece goal, um, that actually came from two set-pieces. When you rewatch the film, they had a set-piece out wide and our guys need to stop the ball, make sure the referee blows a whistle so we can get 10 yards and set up. They take an early free kick. Javier actually does a great job of getting his head on it, but he knocks it out for their corner kick. Then on the corner kick play, we discussed, you know, man for man marking, picks, everybody picks in this league. Was it a foul? Was it not a foul? You know, I don't think so. And so those guys have to be strong enough to fight through things. They got to make sure when the ball is in flight, you, you're, you're paired up here. But once the ball is in flight, you are attacking the ball. Or if you can't get to the ball, then you're making sure your body is up against your opponent so he can't get a clean header on goal. So we discussed all of those things. Um, the, you know, the second goal again, I mean, you know, we need to do better on that. And then the PK call. Um, was just, you know, they, 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 they get over in behind us at the 87th minute. You cannot let teams get in behind you when you're winning 3-2. You know, we need to keep everything in front. They got a ball in behind. Delem did a good job. He made the right play. Jordy made the right play to go back there. It was just unfortunate that his hand was, was there. So we addressed all three goals. And then I finished with some of the good sequences we had you know, because again, I, uh, our attacking movements were pretty good again. I mean, we created a ton of chances again, so tried to end on a positive. How much uh, film study did you guys work on, you know, with everything that you said in regards to maybe uh, positioning defensively and all of that? Well, in general, and then Jimmy will again individually with, with, with guys on an individual basis. So I'll do the general points in the group settings, and then those guys, you know, clean things up with individual sessions. And is that just what usually happens, or is that kind of like the next step after that last... It usually happens. I mean, they all get all their clips pushed out again on Huddle. Tom Childs, our, our video guy, gives them, so they can, on their Huddle account, they can just go there and let's pick, uh, you know, Christian. Christian will have all of his touches in the game, all of his plays already up on his Huddle account. So he can watch that you know, 
hours, a couple hours after the game. You guys got a little fortunate with the results uh, this weekend from other teams, but that meant that the floor kind of got raised, and now uh, teams below you are kind of catching up. So, uh, three games uh, on the road coming up here, and you know Salt Lake specifically. Uh, what what have you told the team about what you guys need to do to get some road results? I have not messaged the team, so I know they don't listen to these interviews anymore. So I'll happily tell you guys, we are close. Vancouver is closer to us than we are to LAFC. If you guys. If I said that correctly. So I think 15 points from uh, from Vancouver, 16 points from LAFC. I sounds, believe my math is correct. About right. So you are absolutely correct that we need to internally figure out the correct messaging to the players because the West is so tight that you know every single game matters. I can I can surely admit that yeah we we lost some points at home and those are critical. But I'm also going to tell you that we've won our last two road games. And so I believe that this team can go out on the road and collect some points. For me, again, it has to come down to the consistency. We've got 10 games left. We've got to find, you know, getting everybody back, find the lineup, get some consistency so that, you know, we end up in second. Out of what you've seen out of, out of, what you've seen out of Luis Silva, how comfortable would you be putting him in the lineup? With Very him? comfortable. He's an experienced guy might play against his former team, you never know. Physically, I know that you know the team does a good job at kind of checking that out. How have you seen that part of it? Good. He's been in He's been in full training uh, with his old team and played a game 10, 10 days ago where he played 70 minutes. So he's fine. And you have this on Gustav and Brad Smith? Gustav is in full. I checked in with him. He is available for both games this week. Um, Brad Smith is not. And Kelvin available for both games so uh, Wingo's moved to Norway was announced this morning um, yeah. for the kids coming through the system now do you think it's important for them to see that there's a pathway abroad uh, as part of that professional pathway at the club uh, it's an interesting one because obviously look we'd love for the players to all pan out and be Seattle Sounders for a long period of time but the numbers just we're developing a lot of good younger players. So, you know, that crop of players, if they don't, you know, find a place here at the, at the first team level, where do they go? How does the club make money? How do we sell these players and, you know, actually benefit the club and maybe benefit the player if he was stuck behind, you know, a, a, a rotation where he wasn't getting minutes. So I think it is important. I'm not so sure I would, really message that to all the young academy kids because I want them to work hard to make the first team. Is that one particularly bittersweet for you? I know you had known Henry for a long time. Uh, yeah. Was that tough for you to see him go in that way? Yeah, it was tough because he's a great kid. But I think the timing was right. You know, we tried the experiment at right back, but, you know, Kelvin and Al Saad and, you know, up, up a line, we, you know, we have some high-priced players in that, in that position. So... You know, I think it was the right timing. I mean, he'd been here for four years, so you know, I think it's a I think it's a win-win. That's what I would call it. Sure. Uh, did you happen to hear uh, Bruce Arena's comments in regards to 1 p.m. games and turf and that being the reason of so many accidents no. of the game? No. no. 